didn't see you there. This is where I, I, I don't live, but someone else does. But isn't it nice? It's Italy, or as they say in France, Le Italy. Um, and uh, well, follow me and I'll tell you something about how Italian paddles are born. Kind of felt this was higher, but okay. So, we're here at the home of uh, Fabrizio Branchio. Some, I don't know. There's another video that shows you about Italian hand sign, sign gestures. Um, Fabrizio, I love saying that, and Andrea, I'm sorry, we apparently exaggerate Italian when we're not Italian. You do it too. You know you do it. Um, are the people behind a new breed of pedals? And uh, they're the people behind uh, the fabulous Clonzamp that was uh, fabricated and uh, distributed by Joyu. Uh, you know about this, but that's not about it. And um, they tried to put in my brain stuff about electronics. And I was like, what? Because as soon as you say resistor, I resist the resistor. But still, I try to share with you the kind of how a pedal is born. You probably have seen some of this information through uh, content by Robert Keeley, who's great at this. Uh, Brian Wampler probably has done tons of it. Um, Jamie Stillman is always sleeping with a breadboard. Now I know what a breadboard is. I, I learn things. So let me in. Let me in. Let me you in on the coffee. Um, I mean, let me clue you in on the process. So I've prepared right here the Italian toast board. Looks more like toast. This is how it can start. You can, of course, already, you know, solder, but this is how it can start. Look, comes with rubber feet, like a good pedal should. Um, so apparently you get one of these. And I'm um, Dave, let's see if you can focus in on this. Dave's behind the camera, people. Cheddar con pao. So what you do is you get the components, which you, of course, have lying around. I mean, who doesn't? Um, and there's something about you have to know how the signal flows through these holes. They explained it to me, but then I fell asleep. Um, so uh, this is just literally, you know, pressed in here. And if I pull this out, I have to remember what hole that was. I'm going to go right here. Um, so uh, you have the ability to quickly change things around, plug it in, follow the electricity current something about stuff, um, and test your pedal. This is an actual pedal. This is probably a very complicated pedal because it's got three knobs and they got clickies and stuff. And I also see USB here, so don't ask me what that's all about. This might come later. Don't steal this. You've never seen this. I don't know. You don't even know what this is. Um, but once you have this and you fiddle around with it, you might want to do a soldered version to take it into the practice room, whatever. But once you find out, this is what I want. And then you talk to your buddies who are better players than you um, and find out, oh, this is what they want. Um, you might want to make it into something that's actually producible because you can't sell this because that, that's going to fall apart. If I just pull on this, it's all gone, and then they're going to hit me. So let's not do that. Um, at that point, we might want to go to the computer. And well, let me show you. So here's where I sit and design the, no, I literally have no idea what, what I designed. This is where Fabrizio sits. And um, I guess some of these are resistors, and some of them are transistors, and some of them are capacitors. I, I learned words. Some of them are knobs. I have no idea. But you do something like this, and then this looks more like an actual PCB. And they twiddle around with that, and some of it is through the hole, you know, through THT, and some of it is SS SMD. SMD always sounds like weapons of mass destruction to me. But that's WMD. It's different, but maybe similar. 
just smaller. So now if I actually worked here, I could show you the 3D version of that, but I actually have, you know what, why doesn't Fabrizio just explain this stuff? Because I literally don't know what he does. Let's say, let's make it simple. Uh, look at me. From look at that, uh, look at, look oh at yes, not looking at you because uh, you're not so interesting. Uh, so we start from uh, a scratch uh, design, uh, we refine that design, and then we put the design on the computer because it's uh, much more convenient to use the computer instead of uh, uh, paper and pencil. When we put it on the computer, uh, this is a representation of uh, the physical world, it's just a model. And then from this, uh, I would say, uh, computer drone uh, schematics, you um, prepare a printed circuit uh, model. Uh, I mean, these are wires and those wires are here. Uh, this is a, a MOSFET component, that component is placed on this. Uh, with the computer you can zoom in and out uh, and you can have a 3D uh, representation of this. Uh, I switch it to uh, 3D view and it's possible to see uh, the 3D representation of the circuit uh, on the computer. This is uh, still, uh, everything is virtual now, but uh, we are talking about uh, something real that can be uh, built and mass produced, or even uh, mm, produce it in uh, little pieces just to tune up our prototypes. So, when you have that, you can order the PCB, which is technically a step back because it doesn't have all the fiddly bits on it. It's just the board. As far as these pedals go, they went through four sets of PCBs to actually get to the final version. So you have this, you order it from a company that does it for you in a very, very small quantity. So you can maybe have, you know, five to 10 pedals of yeah, each. Yeah, five, 10, uh, yes. Yeah, and test it. Makes sense. And then, uh, but you still don't have the factory placing the SMD components no, on there. You have to place everything by hand. But aren't those SMD components really tiny? Do you have like mice? trained to do that? You use uh, tweezers uh, to place uh, that. Uh, you need uh, good hands uh, and you need a lot of patience uh, to, to put that. You know who has a lot of patience? Hospitals! <sighs> okay, so um, I think we need to see how you place the prototype components on one of those things. Yep. Because Andrea said you're doing this by hand, the tiny, sure. tiny fiddly bits. We just change, uh, switch to the lab where uh, I'm doing that. It's like Dexter. You go through the wall and it's like, no, we're in the, we're in the laboratory. I don't know, Dexter, <laughs> Russian. I, don't, I haven't seen Dexter in a long while, but something about laboratory in Russian. Uh, yeah. We're going to go to the lab. Let's do a, like one of those turny round transitions. Can you do a turny round transition, Dave? Now we are in uh, Fabrizio's lab and he's, you know, <laughs> Mr. Crazy Professor Man. Um, because, well, one of the reasons he does all the work is A, Andrea doesn't wanna, and B, uh, he's got better eyes, but still not good enough. He needs the yeah. crazy contraption because we're talking about very, very tiny things. So uh, you place the, through the whole components, but also the SMD stuff. Yeah. And usually, let's show the nice people how that's done. This comes in the factory when this is actually mass produced. Yeah. The components come on a strip like this, which is very hard to understand that resistors and transistors and... Stirs. Stirs and <laughs> capacitors. Uh, this, this is what they are, these tiny little things, um, as you can see in this clip. But this wouldn't do you any good here because you can't pick them off. No, it's not practical to pick. Uh, there is a pick and place machine in the factory that uh, actually eats these uh, strips and takes uh, the components uh, uh, with a vacuum needle uh, from here. It's not practical in, uh, in a lab. Uh, so you it's have... better to, to organize things in such a way. Uh, uh, you have a grid with uh, all the components and uh, you know, um, you follow uh, uh, your uh, bill of material, uh, you follow your design and uh, you need, for example, a 10 key, a 
10 kilo ohms resistor, you know that it's number 17. You search for number 17. You have uh, inside this about little box a, a billion. There's about a billion. Yeah, it's inside. about 100, uh, uh, 100 resistors uh, uh, whose value is uh, um, 100 kilos. So okay. it's uh, 10,000 uh, ohms. Uh, you take uh, one of these uh, or uh, the number you need. You use a tweezer. Uh, it's around. Okay, I, I use another tweezer. Okay. You take away uh, the components you need, and you put it on uh, uh, the PCB in the uh, right place. In the right place. But it looks to me that. This is not the, the right the, place, and the, it's, it's okay. what you're doing right now is not the right place. Yeah. What you are seeing, people, is the right place because we've filmed this before. Um, uh, it took 70 tries to get it right. Uh, no, it didn't. Um, <laughs> but we're talking about a tolerance of like not even a millimeter. It needs to be perfectly placed. Um, well, it depends. Uh, uh, when do you do it uh, with an iron like uh, this? Uh, mm -hmm. It must be uh, placed uh, uh, as best uh, as possible. Uh, following uh, your uh, uh, alignment. Mm -hmm. uh, if we are talking about using uh, an oven and uh, a stencil uh, like this, um, wait, you wait, can wait, have... Wait, wait. An oven and a stencil. These guys are almost as dumb as I am. Oh, okay. okay, so... There are two ways to do this. You uh, have this PCB. Yeah. And on the PCB, on certain spots, you want yeah. it to be sticky. Yeah. So, you use something like this, which is a sheet with holes called a stencil yeah that is specific to that pcb yes you align it perfectly you take uh, mayonnaise and smear it on there or some kind of italian condiment <laughs> okay um and put it on here so that at those points where you want it sticky it gets sticky yeah let's say that uh, if you do it manually you use uh, this uh, wire uh, and uh, if you want to do with uh, that, uh, use a, a kind of jam, which is uh, this wired jammed, uh, and uh, you put it. So not mayonnaise. No, a jam. A jam. It, uh, it's like, more musical. Like, jam ah, like a soldering jam. Yeah. At those points, it then gets the soldering jam on the PCB. Yeah. And it at the same time also gets sticky. So that yes. means the components will stay in place. The component is kind of a floating mm -hmm. on over this jam. Then uh, you, put, you, you take uh, the PCB and you put it into the oven. So the oven is an interesting thing because at uh, Micromega where we filmed the actual process, that's a different video, watch that, um, uh, the production process, they had these huge oven and we were talking about like, you know, five, six, seven meters long, three meters wide. And we come in here and he's got a little toaster. Yeah. But it's literally a Bon Cuisine Petite. Yes. Toaster. Just modified. Uh, why in Micromega the oven is so long? Because they uh, is divided in section and each section has a temperature. Because you have to rise it, uh, uh, raise the temperature slowly yeah. and then keep it at 250. It must follow a profile, yeah. a temperature profile. But this thing is hot or not hot. So how yes, does that work? Uh, uh, actually, it's a modified oven. Uh, the oven is always 100% uh, hot, but there is a controller that uh, uh, says to the oven, switch it on, off, on, 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 off, on, off, or something like uh, uh, a modulation of the hotness. Did you build that yourself? Uh, no, actually, it was it was it was possible to build uh, myself, but actually, is a kit available on the internet for the nerds like we are, and uh, so uh, you can use that. Uh, to have, uh, uh, without uh, spending billions uh, for prototypes, uh, an oven. If you don't have that, uh, let me show what happens. This is was trying to cook something <laughs> without a controller. So <laughs> and it, it you just, see... <laughs> it just it, can you see this, Dave? Yep. It just, it just literally burned through. So yeah. that's, uh, you want a nerdy controller on your Bon Cuisine Petite. <laughs> if you have a Bon Cuisine Petite, get a nerdy controller. Nerdycontrollers.com, the controllers <laughs> for the nerds. Um, <laughs> um, so um, either you do that with the stencil, yes, the so mayonnaise you, jam. You do uh, manually with the, uh, the Or you iron. actually do this manually with a soldering iron. Yeah. 
this tiny. Because see, when I solder, it's like blob, pfft, loads yeah. of solder, and things just don't work when I, I mean, do it. This is tiny. Also, the wire. It's not tiny. that tiny. I mean, come on. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> yours is bigger. Oh, mine is most certainly big. I mean, not much, but um, okay. So this is for the prototyping stage. And you can clearly see why if you made pedals this way pr as a production line, you yeah. sitting here doing it this way, you wouldn't be able to actually pay for those pedals. Yeah. The, the benefit of SMD is that it can be done by a machine with a strip. Um, this and is the same. I mean, this is THT. First prototype, uh, this is a four. Uh, prototype four, yeah? Yes, uh, uh, and it's absolutely the same circuit. Uh, but this is THT with little mm -hmm. THT uh, components. But what I'm saying is if you were to do SMD, yeah. the tiny bits, here, and you were to do 100 pedals, it just wouldn't work because this is a very, very meticulous process. You know, putting the mayo on and the oven I mean, this wouldn't make sense, which is why when yeah. companies do it by themselves in-house. Yeah, it, it's possible, but uh, it doesn't make uh, too much sense. So it makes sense either they have a machine to do the SMD or yeah. they do it through the whole completely like jam pedals and some other pedal yeah. builders. Um, SMD doing it the way you're doing only makes sense in the prototype stage. Yes, sir, because you need to test uh, even if it's SMD ready for mass production, you need to have uh, um, a final test. This is the point. Obviously. If you do it manually, you need a lot of patience. Uh, but at, at last, you have uh, what is going to be uh, going in production. So how long does it take you to finish one of those? Because that's that's how much you would have to pay depend, yes, <laughs> to buy one of those <laughs> if Fabrizio did it handmade. Manually, it depends from the complexity of the circuits. Let's say that if I start from scratch, it's about one hour and a half. Uh, you don't need to... Uh, maybe I can do it in one hour, but I prefer to take my time, breathe, and uh, don't become nervous. So I'm, uh, uh, I do it in a better way, and uh, I don't stress myself. You need very quiet hands. Not a lot of that ridiculous espresso you're serving me, where he's like... <laughs> yes, and usually I listen to classical music. Okay. I do that. No northern Norwegian thrash metal. It's possible, but... <laughs> Andrea probably does when he does, yes. does the work. Um, but he doesn't do the fiddly bits, because he's got his people for that. So here we are with uh, back with Andrea. Um, what are we back? He hasn't even been in this video. Where have you been? Around. He's been Thinking around. About new pedals. Thinking about new pedals. Um, so once Fabrizio has placed all the stuff on the thing, and we technically have a prototype, we still need a chassis. And yeah, for one or two, you could, you know, even put them in a wooden something. Enclosure. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to, you could have you could take an old pan, drill holes into it. Yeah. Whatever, whatever. But like you're gonna have space. Yeah. 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 Small, small pan for one egg. Um, but you're gonna have to finalize the enclosure at some point and decide what you want to do. Um, now, since uh, both of them in different fields have worked a lot, uh, you work in the automotive industry. And uh, Fabrizio works in the software industry, but developing products for who knows who, where they they need actual physical products. Um, they they know how to get their hands on that kind of thing. But you didn't want to go for the standard pedal enclosure that you can buy in bulk. Yeah, well, I think it's kind of boring. Everybody's using that. They're all the same. I wanted to do something a bit different, looking different and maybe more versatile, more flexible. So we looked around, uh, we couldn't, of course, invest million in something completely custom made. So the idea was some, to find something available on the market uh, without the need of big investments and then try to customize it to our needs as much as possible. So you went for something that other companies might use for like a little preamp or something, yeah. uh, or like a little headphone stereo preamp. So pretty much the profile of the aluminum is already done, and yeah. they just had to convince them to drill the holes in a different place. Yeah. So um, <laughs> this will look kind of something like this. They have an idea, a drawing with all the measurements, and then they go, and this is just the only place to get them, to China. 
Yeah. Um, they said if they go to a local company, order this, that local company will come back five days later and have gotten it from China. So it's kind of pointless to not go directly to China. They make them only in China. I so so. Um, <laughs> what you get, what they then get, get back is this aluminum profile like this, and a you you the this. Yeah. No, okay. You have the aluminum profile with the holes, which of course are to their specs. Uh, the holes on the sides for the screws up to their specs. The bottom with the screw and the threads up to their specs. You can smack it this way together. And then the sides. And you have... The sides go this way. Yeah. And then you yeah. have your box. You have a very sexy pedal enclosure. This is similar, not quite, but it's all, uh, similar to Strymon. The Strymon is... All yes, the way around. Rounded. Yes. Um, this. Uh, what about um, source audio? They also mm. do brushed aluminum. Yeah. Uh, similar. So you see these a little bit, and I really very much like that design aesthetic. Um, but you have to, you know, you have to order these from China, and that's probably in terms of uh, the one item on the on the invoice, probably the highest priced item right well yes in terms of cost yes because it's not the standard uh, aluminum um, classic box that everybody uses and uh, it is custom made because the extruded parts like these are coming from profiles which are standard but then we have to to have them CNC routed to do all the holes and drills and so on uh, we got them also anodized in two different colors you see which I think is kind of nice cool. looking and uh, so at the end of the day we have a box which is the classical size of a normal mm, compact pedal mm -hmm. not so big not so not so small big enough to fit good potentiometers on it which I think is important and uh, still looking cool and by the way the, the nice thing is that you can put several modules side by side and uh, make multiple effects mm -hmm which wouldn't be possible with the typical boxes that everybody uses. Exactly. Yeah. So, <coughs> how many of those did you have to go through? Order, say, ah, it didn't work, and then order again. Did you get it right on the first try, or did you mess up? No, it was almost <laughs> right on the first try. The only thing that we needed to fix a little bit was for the multiples, you know, when you have the, uh, the back one, mm -hmm. the back part, which is two times bigger or three times bigger, we, did, we had to fix a little bit the length of it. But apart from that, it was it went right, quite right from the first time. So and that's, we were lucky. That's where the experience of working yeah. with a factory in China yeah. comes in, knowing exactly <laughs> yeah. what to give them. Yeah. Because you know exactly, okay, we need to make, we need to explain this correctly. Um, I've, I've worked with uh, Joya for a long time. It is, a, it is an, an art to get the communi <laughs> yes. communicating with anyone um, is is an art form. Yeah, so also because you, you experienced in that. Yeah, I, I worked with China many years, especially for the automotive business. And yeah, it, it's some kind. Sometimes it's difficult to be understood correctly. Just as an ex as an example, uh, normally these kind of boxes made of extruded aluminium are used this way. So this is the front panel where you are, have the knobs, and this is just the cover. This is just the box. So just explaining to the people, no guys, I want the box on this, not on this, was already something weird for them. And it took quite some time to make sure that we were totally understood about what I would think it's enough to say, look at the drawing, that's what I want. But I know exactly uh, that that's <laughs> not it. You see, we make the drawing It's better. not enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's not enough. Also, uh, the, the, um, which side you should look at the drawing? Is this the front or is this the front? This is already a problem because if, if you miss that, you might have the holes mirrored all, all um, messed up <laughs> okay so you have to be careful and anyway it went it went okay and um, the quality is very nice i have to say so i'm quite i'm quite happy with that so Fabrizio, once we get to the point where you've went through your three four prototype stages of the pcb you yeah. know exactly what you want you pick the right pcb color which apparently to you is very important well it makes sense to, it, it uh, makes to match sense. Uh, I mean, it's something like a detail inside, but if you look at the details, even inside, it means that you uh, like to look to all the details. It makes sense that the PCB has the right color. I mean, in 
I understand because the guys from uh, Beatronics are insane enough to give the PCBs shapes of bees. So yeah, oh. you're all nuts. I hope you know that, right? Oh yeah. Good. Um, so now I just saw a PCB in the shape of a nut. I don't know why. Um, so you have that. Uh, you've taken care of the enclosure. You finalized that. Yeah. So you can put it all together. There's the pedal. Now comes the difficult step. It sounds good. You know that. Well, actually. It sounds pretty damn good. Now you take it, you fly to Germany to some yep. idiot who plays and says, I didn't know what I said, something. Um, it needs more high end or more yep. range on the tone knob or uh, I like compressors that do this. And that's of course only a personal input yeah, yeah. from one exactly. guy. But you have just said that it sounds good, but we designed it. And uh, uh, in Italy we say that uh, uh, each son, uh, even uh, if it's uh, mm, very mm, bad looking, is wonderful to the to the to the father to the mother, and so you need uh, uh, a different opinion, a different uh, looking, a different way of looking to the things. You live in a uh, bubble, a different feeling because mm -hmm. maybe you are not uh, uh, looking at that detail. So we fly mm -hmm. to Germany. And and, uh, and you get a different opinion. And, and yeah. the brutal thing is, and I mean, the, those guys know me. For me, it doesn't matter how how uh, much I'm friends with anyone. If someone comes to me and says, how do you like my song or how do you like my pedal? Then it's my job to just be honest. And uh, that's Even not- Even rude, it. but it, it makes sense. I mean, it's, you know, I, no one wants to be rude, but obviously I'm not helping you from saying, oh, this is all great, produce it, yeah. make 5,000 of them. So, uh, and then of course you have uh, every right to take that into consideration or not into consideration. You know, do yeah. with it as you please. But we spent two days at my place um, having good food too. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> played the pedals, talked about it, talked about the mod modular approach um, and kicked around ideas. Then you took them back yeah. and went through Probably that was like the third PCB at that point in time, I guess. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I the first one so. was, was THT. I'm listening. Then uh, SMD, then you took that to me, uh, that rhymes. And then uh, you went into the third prototyping yeah, stage so. after my comments. And some now- Some optimization, some sound optimization mm -hmm. following your suggestions, and then some production optimization. Because at least at the end, you needed to mm, make a production of that. You need to make sure that and you can actually produce it. Yes. And also produce it for, you know, money, a uniform money that way. people want to, yes. also for, for a cost that people want to spend. Yeah. Uh, so, so I guess that's why uh, uh, at that point you went to uh, Micromega. Yeah. And find, found out, can they do this here in Italy, here in uh, uh, Turin, uh, which is of course what's important to you. Yeah. You know? I mean, we want this to be uh, made in Italy. Yeah. Uh, it's an added uh, value for a quality reason for we have a complete uh, touch on the product, uh, quality control on the, pro and you on the product. And, and you can't stamp made in Italy on it if it's not yeah. made in Italy. I mean, because yeah. that's lying and we don't, oh, yeah. when we don't lie. Yeah. So um, now we're, you're at the point where it's there, it's ready, it says made in Italy. And now we ask these people in a, in a different video, um, where to go for me? And now it's the whole yeah. marketing. You're already working on the website, the web store, mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. Um, but we need to know where where does it go? What's what's the company name? Because you have the product and the product's great, but you know, to you, that's not enough. What's the name? Uh, what about the color? What about graphics? Is that important? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? How do you want to buy it? Do you want to buy it through Kickstarter? Do you, you want to buy it direct? Um, of course, for a small startup brand, you wouldn't be picked up by any of the big stores immediately yeah. because they don't know you. Um, so uh, that's where you're at now. So the pedal is born, yeah. but it needs to walk. It needs to get out there. And so the question is, what clothes does it, what does it wear? Does it analogy still work? I have no idea. What shoes do we put on it? I don't know. What name do we give the pedal? You know, that's all, all that stuff. <laughs> um, that's of course something that the engineers, hey, sounds great. It's got op amp feds things. I don't know. It's got the 32943 germanium 
See, I don't know about this. I care about like, oh, that sounds good. I, I care about like, you know, does it have a sexy name? For me, that's important. Then again, what's important to you? So this is how a pedal's born. This is done in the crazy world of uh, those guys, Andrea and Fabrizio in Turin, Italy, all sourced here, and then some help, this about half a percent from Germany. Um, uh, we're having a good time. Thanks uh, for having us. Uh, hopefully you will see more of these pedals. I would like to say, you know, Clons Labs, but maybe you decide in the video about where it's gonna go. That it's not Clons Labs because you know oh, that's not good, but maybe say, that's awesome. Please comment about all that stuff below. Um, and how does this usually end? What do we have at the end? Animals. Ah, animals, and then? At the end? A animals at the end? Animals, animals, animals. Animals at the end? Ah, animals at the end. Let me